I'm curious what it would look like if we were at the, uh, the height of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. We have some examples of that, a couple of different examples of the incursions that you just talked about with Russia when we were in Iraq and Afghanistan, and they barely even, they were really a blip on our radar, it seemed like yeah. anyway. Uh, certainly not front page for more than a, more than a day. Um, if- yeah, I mean, if there was a time to stop the Russians from this process and try to force them into negotiations over a non-Soviet future in which we all you know get along, if that's the right phrase, the time was 2004, because that was when the Russians invaded Georgia. And Georgia was a country that was attempting to westernize, attempting to get rid of corruption, attempting to join the EU. And because we were involved in Iraq, we had absolutely no diplomatic and especially military bandwidth. So yeah. the Russians invaded Georgia while Putin was in a box at the Olympics with George Bush to underline that there was nothing that he could do. Wow. And I didn't know that he's at the Olympics. That's amazing. Um, mm. But yeah, it seems like if we're distracted elsewhere. We pay very little attention to some of these other uh, things going on that people can't right. really find. Especially if we we have we have something we haven't had in the United States now in 20 years. We have dry powder. Uh, yeah, exactly. Got to use it. See, that's what I mean. Uh, uh, the, the point of dry powder is not to use it. The point <laughs> of, dry, of dry powder is you you have the because you got to replenish it. You got to replenish using. it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's been it's been four years now since we did the the withdrawal from Iraq, mm-hmm. and so we now have an army that is rested and recouped and has had a chance to retrain and reequip and uh, and build out its numbers again. It's capable. I don't think anybody in the military doubts that. But political support in the United States for any sort of ground war that's going to take another decade, and that's not going to be in Ukraine. No, no, I'm I... unless something significant shifts in the strategic picture. So if Ukraine collapses this year, uh, we will have forces in Poland and we will be at a very high risk of a nuclear exchange with the Russians. That's one of the reasons why we're trying so hard to support the Ukrainians so that that doesn't happen, that we aren't put into that position. Because there's no there's no buffer anymore. Uh, no yeah. buffer states. Uh, and, and we now know that the Russians are so militarily incompetent that in a face to face fight with NATO, they would be obliterated. And so the only tool that they would have our nukes and the Russians feel rightly that if they can't get to that crystal defense again, their demographic decline is so steep that they'll cease to exist in 20 years. And they're right. Mm -hmm. So for the Russians, they're all in. And that means every tool is on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Wild.